Hey, what is up guys? It is Sarbin Hardware and in today's video we're gonna build the best 650 US dollar gaming PC and I specifically chose parts that you can hopefully buy by the time you're watching this. But yeah, the stock for PC components is absolutely bonkers right now. It sucks, but we all pray and hope that the situation gets better anytime soon now. Anyway, in today's build, we're gonna go through the whole building process of this PC from start to finish, and we're then going to start up the PC and test the gaming performance of some of the most popular games. And as always, in case you decide to build this, all items are linked up down below. Spending about $660 gives you a PC build that is able to run most games at 1080p high settings at good frame rate, or what we in the PC space like to call at least 60 FPS. Now, we're obviously gonna dive into the gaming performance in much greater detail in a second but just to give you guys an idea here is what you can expect but yeah again we're gonna look at these benchmarks much much more a bit later in today's video anyway inside this pc we find 16 gigabytes of ram a high clocked ryzen processor a 500 gigabyte m.2 uh, unit from kingston as well as a gtx 1660 graphics card from nvidia everything contained inside this popular high airflow case from cooler master anyway timestamps can be found down below now before we get started be sure to drop a comment let me know what you thought about the video drop a like if you enjoy the content and make sure to subscribe to never miss an episode so we're kicking things off with the cpu ram and motherboard and for today's build we're gonna use the ds3h coming in at 70 dollars this is an extremely reliable motherboard and the price to performance is simply put hard to beat and if you want to build a cheap gaming PC in 2021, you want to spend most of the budget on graphics followed by CPU and RAM. And so that is why we are spending as little as we can on the motherboard as it's going to give us more money to spend on GPU and CPU, which ultimately gives us a faster gaming machine. Simple as that. So let's take a look at the processor coming in at $99, this is the Ryzen 3 3100, this one comes with 4 cores and 8 threads with a base clock of 3.6 and 3.9GHz turbo. Now having a look at the CPU gaming performance we see that the 3100 does a great job versus the competition. Now despite not being able to match some of the more expensive picks, this is still a fantastic CPU in a $600 PC with a 1080p graphics card. As we can see our motherboard comes with a retention frame but since we're using a cooler with springs rather than a retention clips we have to remove the retention frame from the motherboard now installing the processor is actually quite simple you want to locate the golden triangle on the processor and this triangle lines up with the triangle on our motherboard socket and you simply want to turn the cpu so that the corresponding triangles match up then open the metal arm drop the processor into the socket and put the metal arm down and our cpu is now installed inside the cpu box also comes a heatsink which is actually good enough for stock settings and the cooler installment is also pretty simple and if this is the first time installing the cpu cooler it should have some thermal grease pre-applied and in that case you don't need to apply some thermal grease on the cpu lid position the cpu cooler so that the four spring screws on the heatsink align with the four uh, screw holes on the back plate once aligned carefully place the heatsink onto the cpu Using a screwdriver, turn a spring screw half a turn clockwise to ensure the spring screw makes a connection with the back plate. Follow a diagonal pattern across the CPU cooler, further tightening each spring screw with a full turn. And with all four spring screw uh, connected to the back plate, tighten them up until you feel resistance. Then check the CPU cooler to ensure that it's uh, properly secured to the motherboard. Lastly, we connect the fan power cable to the CPU cooler to the fan, a CPU fan header on the motherboard. Moving on to memory and we're gonna pick this high quality memory sticks from Corsair. Now this is 16GB which is actually more than enough to meet most uh, uh, game recommended requirements in 2021. Now the speeds for these are rated at 3200 and that will give us a slight increase in FPS versus a slower clock kit as the way that the CPU operates. Having faster clocked RAM can gain a bit of performance in your favorite game. However, it is important that you activate the so-called XMP profile in order to uh, simply enjoy this frame rate boost and I'll link up a video down below that shows you how to do this. 
We're going to populate the gray slot, so simply pull back the toggle for the second and the fourth dim slot and simply plug in the RAM sticks just like so. So let's install our M.2 drive. Now this particular one comes from Kingston. This is 480 gigabyte, and it will cost you roughly $60, which is totally worth it. Now this drive is extremely fast and to put things in perspective this M.2 unit is about 35 times faster than a traditional hard drive and so with this drive you can say goodbye to long lasting loading screens. So we want to locate the M.2 slot which we find right here underneath the CPU cooler. And what you want to do is you want to loosen this tiny screw just like so. Then gently slide the M.2 unit into the socket with the notch on the opposite side of the CPU cooler just like so. Finally take the small screw uh, just like so, hold it down just like that and screw it down until it stops. And with that done, our actual motherboard assembly if you like is actually completed. We can go ahead and move it into our chassis. And in today's build, we're gonna use the 320L from Cooler Master coming in at $60. Now this is a micro ATX beauty, so it is a little bit smaller compared to a traditional mid-enclosure. And it's got a dark mirror glass, and this is creating a very nice look. And on both sides of the mirror, we find honeycomb mesh for optimal airflow. Now Cooler Master also sells this case with a perforated front, so in case you want to go all in the airflow, you can do that too. Now both cases are linked up down below in case you want to check them out. For IO at the top we find two USB as well as a mic and an audio port. There is room to fit a 240 radiator at the top or a small 120mm one at the rear. So the first thing we're gonna do is we have to prep the case and we're gonna take off these four thumb screws holding the temper glass. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to install our IO shield that we find in our motherboard box. Now this one goes in from the back of the case with the circular audio ports located at the bottom. Now with the CPU cooler installed we can just grab onto the CPU fan and slide the motherboard into place and I prefer having the case laying down as I'm installing and securing the motherboard. Now before we install our motherboard we first need to remove these two PCE slots otherwise we won't be able to install our graphics card later on. We're gonna use the screws that comes provided from Cooler Master. With the motherboard installed before we move to power supply, graphics card and storage installment, now is a good time to install the chassis cables that take care of the front audio and USB as well as the power button. Let's start with USB 3 and this is what it looks like. Simply route it through one of the various routing holes and plug it in just like so. The connector is located down uh, at the bottom of the motherboard. Next up we have the front audio and this cable goes to the left side corner. Lastly, yeah, we have the front panel connectors and you find this on the lower right side. This can be a bit tricky but just take your time. With that done, let's go ahead and install our power supply. And I chose this 550 watt unit from Corsair. Now this is a brilliant and compact and silent high quality PSU with 80 plus bronze efficiency certification with black sleeved cables coming in at just $58. Make sure you got the fan facing downwards, then gently slide it into place and secure it. We're gonna do a couple of cables and wiring before installing our graphics. And first up, we got the 24 pin power for our motherboard and this one goes to a connector on the mid right side. Next up we got the 8 pin power for our CPU and this one goes all the way up to the top left side corner. Alright so it is time to install our graphics and for today's build we find a GTX 1660. This one specifically from Asus and their popular dual series lineup. Now the 1660 comes with 6GB of VRAM which is perfectly good enough for 1080p but with 6GB you can actually even play some 1440p gaming. This GPU should also be a little bit easier to find at MSRP but yeah right now this isn't the best time to build a PC. Anyway I've gone ahead and linked up some options down below for you guys. Plug in the graphics card just like so and take this PCIe cable and plug it into our graphics card just like so. 
Now, before working on the side panel, we're gonna need to install this ARGB controller as well, since our motherboard is simply missing a 3-pin ARGB connector. Simply plug the hub into a free SATA power connector, and this is what it looks like. Then connect both fans to a free 3-pin ARGB connector coming from the controller, and you are good to go. Now what is left to do now is to flip the case around, whack on the side panel and we have officially completed our 650 US dollar gaming PC build and if it did everything right your system should power on. So let's fire up some games and find out how it performs. On your screen now guys you see the performance numbers I've gathered from today's build and I ended up running I think 14 games in total and overall I am actually more than happy with today's build, but let's dive a bit deeper with some of the games tested and first, let's have a look at Death Stranding running at 1080p high settings. Now as we can see this beautiful looking game runs fantastic on today's build with an average of 93 FPS with 1% low at 79 and so very high numbers and uh, yeah if you got a monitor that supports 1440p I would definitely recommend that and you should be able to reach 60 FPS here with no problem. Moving on to CSGO and here I went for a more competitive frame rate where I left pretty much everything at low at 1080p and this results in well over 200 FPS in a random deathmatch. Doom Eternal is next and once again I'm picking high settings and 1080p and this machine has no problem reaching 60 FPS here once again so 1440p if you have a monitor that supports it obviously is definitely possible. Overwatch is next up running at 1080p high settings results in a very smooth gameplay and over 100 FPS at 1% low. Even Horizon Zero Dawn runs great again at 1080p high settings. Again guys, all PC components we just went over can be found down below. Now I am starting up a discord server and on this server we're going to discuss PC builds and issues and everything in between and so I'm obviously going to hang out there and so if you want to get in contact with me this is definitely the best place to do it. The link to the discord server can be found down below. Now watch either of these two videos. I want to thank you so much for watching this video and until next time have an awesome day.